Jesus said, Man cannot live on bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You're listening to Daily Truth. So no, I do not believe that the primary exegesis of verse 26 of our text is that if you commit a sin habitually post-conversion or post what you thought was conversion, then you actually don't have justification. And not only that, but you have proven yourself to be an unsavable apostate, cross-referencing to Hebrews chapter 6, for whom repentance is impossible, like Esau, who sought the blessing with tears but could not repent, and that the only thing that you have to look forward to is the inevitable expectation of a fiery judgment. No, I don't don't believe that's what the apostle is saying. Because here's the problem with that. How often does a sin have to be committed to be habitual? You're saved. All right, let's just play it out hypothetically. Here's the example. You're saved. And daily before conversion, you committed sin X. Now that you're saved, weekly you commit sin X. If you do something once a week, is that a habit? Could we call that repetitive? And if you have a knowledge of the truth, you understand the gospel and you recognize that sin X is in fact a sin, Could we say that you are going on sinning deliberately? Well, then you're not saved. In fact, we could make the argument like this. We could say that anyone post what they thought was real conversion who commits a sin more than once, the same sin two or three or more times, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 is talking about you. Your name is on the page. I don't think that that's what the author is writing about. I don't believe that that's the correct interpretation of this text. Now, that said, there are degrees. There are degrees. And I would, in fact, say, not necessarily primarily hanging my hat on this individual text, but in multiple other texts, a whole biblical theology relying heavily on 1 John, for instance, I would say that there is a certain point, a certain degree, where even if your ongoing deliberate sin is not Judaism, but your ongoing deliberate sin is daily, and there's no improvement, and it's been not weeks, not months, but years, or decades, and there's no real growing aversion toward that sin, there's no godly sorrow which leads to repentance for that sin, there's been nothing but lies and covering up and minimizing and hiding that sin, then yes, I think at a certain point, we could in fact say, brother, sister, although you profess to know the truth, there is not sufficient fruit. And I cannot any longer affirm you in a salvation that I have no assurance whether or not you have. I would be actually hating you to to give you and offer to you a sense of false assurance when the reality is that all signs point to the very real possibility Not that you have lost your salvation, but that you have claimed to possess a salvation that in fact you have never, ever had. There is a point. There is a point where where our outward manifestations of sin in a habitual pattern for a long enough period of time to a high-handed degree, eventually these things do in fact serve as a sign of the underlining sin, the one real sin that is underlining always cases of apostasy, and that is the sin of unbelief. Big news, really big news. Our next Right Response Conference is in the works. We've got a number of things already lined up and organized. This is what we've got so far. The whole conference, three days long on post-millennialism and theonomy. And the speakers, Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Gary DeMar, and of course, yours truly, Pastor Joel Webbin. We've got a great lineup. We've got great topics. If you want to find out dates 
and location and registration and anything else, go and visit our website, rightresponseconference.com, rightresponseconference.com.